three, two, one. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. It's like we're like banging our head. Oh. oh. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm all up for the energy first thing in the morning. So Happy Friday. Happy Friday. And we have, um, I'm Jurgen. This is Davina. And with us also is a special guest broker from our office, Jason Palmer. What's up, Jason? Hi. So happy you're here with us, hanging awesome. on this Friday morning. Good to be here. Yeah, and what we're doing today is this is the Talent Market Update, where we bring you some information about what's going on in the market. Also, on these Fridays, what we really do is we talk about things that are specific to real estate. And today, our subject is talking about ROI on home improvement projects. And we're actually separating it out a little bit to hit a couple different segments as we go through. So one is like the homeowner. If you own your home and you're thinking about doing something because you really want to do it, but you also want to make sure whatever you do, that project is going to have some, when you sell down the road, will have some value in that, uh, in that sale. The next would be for uh, someone who's getting ready to put their home on the market. So if you're getting ready to sell your home, you don't want to do some things, but what is your best ROI return on that investment to get, uh, get out on the market? And the third is if you're an investor and you're looking at what things will give you the best turn on a home you might buy, this is going to cover all three. Yep. Yep. This is good because we get questions all the time about what should I do to my home? I like, are you selling it? No, I'm going to stay, but we're thinking about doing this and that. And we're just wondering if it would, if it would, if we'd get our money back when we did decide to sell, you know, so we get those questions. And so it's, it kind of, it's, it's going to be a great conversation, you know, and then, you know, I'm thinking about, and just before we went on, I was like, you know, what is like, what's your favorite room in the house? Like when we're talking about, you know, um, doing upgrades or remodeling, like where are you, where are we hanging or, or what room do we like to go to? And I was kind of even thinking about that myself. I was like, what is my favorite room? You guys know, like with <laughs> anyone else, Hey, Put it in the chat what your favorite room is. We'd be interested to see what your favorite room is and maybe why just, but just keep it PG. You know, I'm just saying, so. <laughs> yeah, you know, what do you think your favorite room is, Jason? Um, well, I'm in my man, man cave slash office right now. So I like this room. I like my shop too. And that makes a lot of sense. What do you do in your shop? List stuff on eBay most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Davina, what about you? You know, I guess it would, you know, it would, it would be my favorite if I actually did. I think I need to do a remodel. Right. But I think it's my kitchen because, you know, that's kind of where we all entertain and gather and, and such, but it's a toss between the kitchen and actually my bedroom. And I only, and I say my bedroom because in my bedroom, that's kind of where, I like deflate. I've got a little sitting area with fireplace. So my husband and I kind of sit down and we like recline. And so that's kind of like my relaxation space too. So, um, so between the kitchen and the bedroom, you know, each of you took one that potentially could have worked for an answer for me. Like what I have in my space over here where I use it as an office and also able to do some quick recording stuff. This is a space that I really love. Uh, the kitchen. I absolutely love the kitchen. I love to cook and uh, get involved in there. But you stole those. And you even took the bedroom. <laughs> so, you know, um, I would say either uh, outdoors for me because we've got a great backyard and just waiting for the sun to get up so we can start swimming. Or if you were to ask my wife and I had my phone with me, she might say the bathroom. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he never leaves there. What's What's going on? <laughs> am said the living room living room yeah. fantastic yeah you know that is that is also you know you made a point and this is, has nothing to do i mean well you know you do do a bathroom remodel i don't know um Kitchen. what the phone might have to do with, <laughs> with it but <laughs> you're spending more time in the bathroom because you're on the phone but anyway i get it <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, they have those little TikToks of uh, <laughs> wives actually sending out uh, rescue missions to get their husbands out of the uh, out of the <laughs> restroom. So yeah, I, I get it. It's your your potty pal is your. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, funny. All right. And Chrissy, you had a couple of uh, comments you tossed up there. I think we might have missed them. Ah, Chrissy's got kitchen. Always something delicious in there. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there yeah. was one right before. Pam yeah, was Pam, living room. Living room. And V-O-M-R-E-D. She's like, lost. I don't know. It's okay. I've, I've never heard that. <laughs> Oh gosh! Well, I feel like there's code I was supposed to be able to decipher there. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. See, we'll right. maybe maybe John will give us a little more insight later. So. Perfect. Like that though, but yeah, absolutely. Put in the comments uh, what you are, what your favorite room is, or also, you know, if uh, if you're thinking about doing a remodel or have any questions going through this, uh, let us know. We'll even ask you going along the way as we go into the, some of the different segments, what you think might be something you would either A, want to do, or B, think would give that best ROI for you. Mm -hmm. All right. So leading off the conversation. And what I can do is I can just introduce the subject part. And Jason and David, if you want to take one of the two. So we split our six into uh, two per section. And then we'll also talk about some other ones that you might consider inside of there in conversation. So I think very we're all going to have some good input on all of these, to be honest with you, especially the first one. <laughs> the first one is where a lot of people are, and Davina, you mentioned it right at the beginning. We get these kind of questions all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about doing this. Is it a good idea? Uh, and the answer is really all depends, like mm -hmm. for so many things. But the very first one is homeowner upgrades. So you're in your home. You are thinking about doing something. What are the best things you could do within there for ROI? But you're going to live in it for a while. You're not just doing this to turn around and sell it. Mm -hmm. So what is the first one? And why is it the first one? It's almost timely, isn't it? It is totally timely. It yeah, COVID made this first one like really more of a of a of a need, a necessity. And I think it also um it also is a buyer attraction, you know, if a home has this. And it's a home office, like, yeah, building or converting a space into a home office. And how many of us, even working with with um, with with buyers or at or looking for homes with home offices? But obviously, if you're in a home and you need to work, it's not sitting on your couch with your laptop on your or sitting in your dining room kitchen table is not the best space for you to be productive at work. So having that dedicated space for a home office definitely is one um that is on the top of the list yeah jason you mentioned it's one of your favorite homes in the uh, uh favorite rooms in the home yeah also um opening up the floor plan is something you can do number two um so i think that me and my wife were going to do that on our last house but we decided to kind of forego that and just uh, list the house and we didn't see the return on investment in that. So we just ended up doing other stuff to um, spruce up the house. And we just built a house with an open floor plan instead, the, our next house. <laughs> Why renovate it when you can just build it? <laughs> just build it. You know what? It's, it's interesting though, because when you look at costs, so you do have to look at, okay, how much is this going to cost versus if we did this renovation depending on cost and if we're using cash on hand or if we're doing like a home equity line, you know, would it be better for us to just buy another house? I mean, like those are things that you can think about too when you're, if you're doing it for yourself, right? So um, most people, you know, look at, um, I and I was talking before, I have a client or friend actually who um, was trying to make a decision and called and said, hey, I... I have this, this room off of my garage and it has a bathroom, but it only has a toilet and a sink. And we think it might be nice to put a shower in there, but then should we, but then, you know, my wife really wants a better kitchen because the kitchen is kind of closed off and not open to the living room. And I'm like, well, who are you doing it for? You know? And so they're like, well, my wife would be really happy if we had a better kitchen. And I'm like, Hmm, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> 
So, you know, it's kind of like the weighing out the things that are important and that you're going to live in because the, the, the other option, not the kitchen would be for someone else. The kitchen would be for them while they were there. So it's like, what's most important? How long are you going to be in your house? You know, kind of thing. So. Yeah. And that's yeah. also redefining what uh, ROI is too, because ROI could be just a dollar for dollar match or ex excess, hopefully of what you put into it. But really when you're going to be living in the home and this is your home, then some of that ROI could just be the joy you get out of it. The, the, uh, the sense of, comfort and belonging when you get home and it, it's exactly what you want it to be while you're living there. So ROI isn't always directly dollar for dollar. Sometimes yeah. it's that joy. Yep. And um, Heather also had a, her favorite <laughs> room, uh, the music parlor. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, wow. What is that? That, that sounds like it's uh, just off of the library. Yeah, right <laughs> on the west wing <laughs> d-o-m-r-e-d <laughs> no that's fantastic i love that i love it too and i i when you say that when i hear music parlor i think of just this grand piano mm -hmm. and you know playing bach or something right well even as we're talking about for a homeowner tips uh potential renovations etc you're really only limited by what your imagination is right because a music part, what is a music parlor? It's what you make it. Mm -hmm. It could be any room. It could be a room that you popped open a wall and just expanded out and really made it what you want. That's that's the value of home ownership. You can mm -hmm. do these things. Yep. Don, we are in our forever home and just got our permits approved for our garage conversion. It's going to be our crafting gaming family room. Wow, Love super it. exciting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think you see that a lot uh, with uh, Jason. You mentioned like the man cave being in uh, the garage. Oh, no, no. What, did you say the man cave was the garage or? No, that's okay. in the house. The shop is outside. The shop is outside. Yeah. I hear, uh, see more and more uh, like man cave conversions or uh, this family game, family room type of thing happening in garages as well with mm -hmm. that space. Yep. Finishing out the garage, drywalling it, putting it. Yeah, that's another. That's a. That's a good one. Yeah. All right. And then you know what? Uh, any other thoughts on something that you might, as a homeowner, you want to just sit enjoy, or if uh, if not, we've got what what sellers are looking for. Yeah, on, on our I line. think I think one which was one of your favorite places is the outdoor space. Um, you know, outdoor living space is pretty, um, you know, pretty nice when you can actually sit outside and Barbara, you hit the nail on the head, girlfriend, right? <laughs> yeah. Barb, mm -hmm. he's got it. Just, yep. it can be a oasis or a paradise out there for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Having that space. I think about, you know, in the, and, and it's, Summer and winter, because our we definitely need a, a a place to go in those dreary winter fall days, and having that warmth outside is pretty cool. So, yeah. outdoor living is our next part. Awesome to so the cover. Maybe we just go to Don's house, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds like the place to be. <laughs> And covered for sure in yeah. the Pacific Northwest for Scott. Absolutely. Yep. Good call. Outdoor living space. You know, that can really work well. At our uh, at our last home, we just, uh, with three boys uh, and uh, my wife and I, she really didn't have her own space. So we ended up, we had a very large extended front uh, patio and the front actually overlooked a, a green belt. So uh, we had uh, a fire table and a couple of, uh, padded chairs and she just kind of made that her spot so she had she had her little mom getaway so she could get away from the from the noise and the boys for just a little bit little mom i think it's those are big mom getaways I'm <laughs> <laughs> it, it was necessary <laughs> yeah that's good right. so then moving on we've got the seller so if you have your home and you're getting ready to put your home on the market these are some of the uh, best ROIs that you might uh, consider doing. And these are going to be maybe a little bit more 
towards the dollar for dollar. And we have a, uh, well, Davina, what's our first one there? Well, our first one there is actually a minor bathroom remodel, like talking about, you know, doing, you know, maybe putting in some new sinks or um, faucets, um, cleaning up some cabinets, some coat of paint. Like, um, it's amazing, you know, putting in a new vanity, how much, like some really, and honestly, a minor bathroom remodel does not have to take a whole lot of money. It could be just a little bit of a refreshing. So, um, you know, especially um, if you're getting ready to sell your house, what happens a lot of times is you start doing the little projects that you wanted to do when you owned your home. And then you do all the projects before you sell it. And then you're like, man, why did I do that a long time ago? But um, a minor bathroom model can be so beautiful and so attractive and make things look so clean. And it does not have to cost an arm and a leg. So, yeah, according to one article on uh, fortunebuilders.com. Now, we're talking smaller, but on they have their minor bathroom remodel set at like 10,500 with an average return of 10,700. So over 100 percent ROI on that, being able to really improve the value and get it back out. In addition to the impression that it makes when you go on the market, the the awe that mm -hmm. people get when they see it. Absolutely. I mean, like walk in showers and um, and all of those things. And, and Jason's like shaking his head because you got some input on, <laughs> on some of those things, don't you? We have a walk in shower. So, yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because. Back before like walk-in showers were, I mean, I don't know if there was a before walk-in showers were pop, but, the, but there was a, a thing, you know, where you, you have a bathroom and it's, if it's a shower and not a tub, it's a three quarter, but if you have a shower and a tub, it's a full bath yeah. and you're like, well, if I downgrade to a three quarter bath, instead of having a, a full bath, you know, a full bath is, is more value, but then it's, that's kind of, we've gotten past that now. It's, it's more of the, the luxury, you know, there's many, you know, if you've got this amazing shower, you, you don't necessarily need a tub. Right. So yeah. It's, yeah. It's you know, all the best walk-in shower is a, is a waterfall, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think so. That's cold. <laughs> Oh, it depends on where you're at. A heated waterfall. <laughs> a heated waterfall. Okay, a heated waterfall in your shower is like over the top. But if you're talking about a natural awesome. waterfall, you know. Yeah, we're talking about Vegas and the Bellagio, just walking under. That's what I. That's what I was picturing. Actually, that's funny. I don't think that's legal. You know, no, probably not. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm a part of the show. <laughs> Christina, we will be doing all these things or all the things we wanted to do on our home for someone else. Yeah, yeah it, that will happen. Mm -hmm. So Jason, what's number two in the uh, number four overall, but number two in the seller category? Number two is a minor kitchen remodel. Ah. So I think that, you know, if you have a, my thoughts are if you have like an expensive fridge, but it's dirty, um, and you're planning on selling your house, I think even a new clean fridge, even if it's cheaper, might be better to people than having an old dented expensive fridge. And, you know, a lot of the clean upgrades, if your kitchen looks nice and clean and pops, I think that um, I think it's a good, good thing to do. Um, you could almost sell your, you know, more expensive fridge on Craigslist and get a lot of your money back. Mm. Are you speaking that from experience, Jason? Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a dented old i'm like okay that sounds like you've I've got seen, that yeah right ours has a dent in already it's brand new <laughs> yeah you know that's a good um a good uh, observation and scott back to the last my bathtub never gets used it just takes us bigger but you know totally i am not a bath person i told <laughs> i will fall asleep in the shower my knees will like buckle <laughs> i love <laughs> I love my showers. I just love the feeling that, you know, totally yeah. shower all the way. Uh, um, water pressure, a nice yeah. water pressure, just uh, massaging the back. And yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do right after we're done with this. <laughs> 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 Very good. Oh, gosh. All right. So we're talking about bathroom minor, or excuse me, minor kitchen remodel. And um, Jason um, just one of the suggestions was, hey, just get some of those dirty old 
maybe they're expensive and you're tied to them because, oh gosh, I paid this much for them back then in the value. I get, get over it, get something um, nice and new because this is not for you anymore, right? This is for someone else, right? The, so. the matching appliances, making sure that they, uh, especially newer matching appliances, in that same article, they put uh, the average minor kitchen model being about 15,000, which a return of 14.6, which is essentially uh, just a shade under 100% return on value. Uh, it really does pop. And you don't have to look at completely replacing everything in there. Like you don't have to tear down the cabinets or anything else. Refinishing is a great way to make things pop and adding a little bit of hardware on there. Mm -hmm. Yep. We keep going back to the bathroom, right? We're in the kitchen. <laughs> but yeah, the cl the clawfoot tubs are totally uh, beautiful too. So yeah. yeah. Um, another one is uh, the refinishing the cabinets. Like Jurgen, you mentioned not replacing because you totally could like rip out cabinets mm -hmm. and you could do a major mm -hmm. remodel and cabinets are really, can be really pricey. Um, and you could just literally do a cabinet refinishing um, and put new, new hardware on the cabinet, which completely can transform that kitchen space. So um, we, we just need to, yeah. we just need to keep it about is, this is, Donna a is definitely about the soaking. You know what? <laughs> Same. <laughs> Beautiful. Davina, you mentioned something that was really cool. And you know, you mentioned it yesterday and then I saw an article uh, on it, like maybe hours later when I was looking at something else about microwaves, that there are different ways of doing microwaves and somebody did something kind of unique and kind of cool with a microwave. Yeah, a, a, they they did a recent kitchen remodel and it was an over the top kitchen. I mean, it was a beautiful kitchen and- They're in the homeowner category. They're in the homeowner category, but now they're in the, um, because they did it, they did a little bit ago, but they are now in the, okay, are they going to be leaving? But they are sad because they did all of this stuff yeah. for themselves. But now it's definitely going to be an attraction for a buyer, but that they're, I never, I've never seen this before. And maybe it's just because I'm just clueless, but their microwave actually is like, is <clears throat> a, like a drawer. So they push a button and then the panel pops up. And then the microwave slides out and then you put your things in the microwave and you push the button and then the microwave like automatically slides in it. I was like, I've never seen that. Before. Jason, have you seen that before? No, that yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah. I was like, that is really cool. Like no, it's a no door. It's a drawer microwave with, yeah. yeah like like it Star Trek. Sweet. It sounds like something I did see on Star Trek. <laughs> on Star Trek. <laughs> see, it was yeah. interesting. You had mentioned it earlier. Oh, it's, Scott loves them. Scott, of course, Scott. <laughs> wow. Would, yes. You know, he, uh, they they were talking about uh, their favorite things in the kitchen. The two things they mentioned were uh, over their uh, over their gas range, having the water faucet come out so they can put the water right in. Everything is yeah, right there. Faucet. But, mm -hmm. but to get that in there, they had to remove the microwave. So they put the microwave in the drawer. So it goes, it's this whole automated thing. It's like, that's amazing that I just heard about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay. Pretty, pretty cool. Well, there are definitely a ton of different things, but so we stay on time and get through. The next one we're going to talk about then is investor. And if you guys have any tips for your uh, that you want to contribute to, throw them in. Things that you want to do for yourself or you think could add value in there. The last category we want to talk about is investors. So you might be buying a home or you might be in the uh, effort of, flipping a home in some way. So an investor will look at that ROI in a little bit different way than a more standard homeowner or someone who's lived in the home for some time. So with that in mind, who wants to start this one? Oh, I've asked J uh, Davina so far. Jason, what's one of two things that an investor could find really good ROI on in a home? Well, if the, if the flooring is shot, which a lot of the floors are shot in some of these, you know, investor houses, that's a good thing to start with. Flooring. It is. You know what? And you say the flooring is shot. And you know what? I think that is definitely, you know, an eye, you know, can be an eyesore. But sometimes the houses are stinky. And you know where is all the where does all the smell kind of soak into the floor, right? So, 
getting new flooring is not necessarily just an aesthetic thing. It can be, uh, it's a, it can be play to the senses as well. Mm -hmm. can look beautiful, smells good. Who wants to walk into a new smelling house, right? So flooring is, could be huge, but no, you don't have to spend, you know, $20,000 and change everything if you just change the floor. So that's and, a good and another trick is that we used to, um, I worked for an investment company for several years uh, here in town. And what we would do is a lot of these houses were, you know, just ridden with animal urine and, you know, really bad. You couldn't even hardly go in the house. So what we would do is we'd pull up the, the carpet or the hardwood any soft spots could get replaced by a carpenter, which is fairly easy, just stud to stud, almost like drywall. And then you take uh, some kills, some oil-based kills, and you just roll it, put your roller pan on the floor. You just roll it on, um, and that eliminates all smell. It, it encapsulates it underneath the subfloor. So then once you put your new floor on, there's really no smell. I've been in houses you could hardly go in, and then I've put the paint on, and then you can't even smell that anymore. It's gone. That's good. That's it's good. remedied. Mm -hmm. That is. Yeah. yeah. Christy That's had a little a comment one. there. I had a cat smell when we purchased our home. We ripped it. Oh, cat smells are whew, pungent. Ripped out all the carpet and replaced the floor. No more cat smell. Excellent. You know, I, I love that uh, you start with flooring. And I think uh, the next one you guys uh, talk about really plays into this too, because from a psychological standpoint, when somebody enters a home, even from the moment they step on the property and see what the condition is, as humans, we're kind of conditioned to trust what we uh, what we see and what we believe. And first impressions really have that kind of a thing. So if somebody, if you open it up and everything looks fantastic and new, you will tend to see the things that reinforce your opinion that everything is really good about the property. And you'll end up seeing the great things about the property. If the first thing you do is open it up and it looks Mm, really run down, guess what is going to catch your attention everywhere you walk throughout the home? Everything that's wrong with the property. So that investor spending a little bit of time to make sure that it looks and really pops great is doing themselves even a psychological fa uh, favor there. Yep. Oh, and who got it? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Barb has got it. <laughs> what is that, Davina? <laughs> Pay, right? Just pay, right? Like that's like a just, especially if you're you're you know purchasing a home and and as an investor, you know the easiest things that you can do is carpet and paint and and be done. Paint everything, you know. Paint. You don't have to worry about even painting the ceiling a different color than the wall. Just like cover stuff, paint it. Get um, and that's that's huge. Um, and paint also walls. Um, over, over time, if there's someone that had been a smoker in the house, um, they actually tend to soak up odor as well. So putting that nice, fresh coat of paint on the wall, you might have to use the skills to seal, <laughs> to, to seal it into, right. But, um, I'm using a, a really good, good paint and painting is huge, huge. And then a, a home that smells like fresh paint and carpet is like, that's like, yeah, there's a, it feels new. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what? Something while you were talking, something popped into my head of just getting some of these things are even just getting a, a home ready for the market that we do. And so we have conversations about this, but you know, I don't know why it just popped into my head. This, this little flashing light bulb that one thing you can do to make the house look nice without, um, without breaking the bank in any way. Just replace your light bulbs or make sure you have matching light bulbs throughout. Like all yeah. the, all the sock, everything actually has light bulbs and that they are the same color light bulbs. You have yellow with daylight and. That that's true. You know, um, it does make a difference. And especially if um, there's some dark spaces, you know, adding lamps and mm -hmm. making, yeah, it can definitely help as well. Um, but I mean, obviously that's not a, that's a fixture, but yeah, yeah. but still adding, yeah, adding, yeah. <laughs> adding yes, some yes, yes. 
Yeah, there are so many things when we talk about getting a home onto the market, but sticking with the theme for today, this is really based in that ROI. And then we covered uh, three different categories with two piece totaling to six, which was homeowner, someone who's going to be living in the home and wants to have that enjoyment, but also have the investment for the future. Warm light is my preference. Awesome, Scott. Mm-hmm. Number two is seller, which is someone who is getting their home ready to go on the market and wants to make the best investment and in ROI from that investment to uh, help with the pricing and the sale. Uh, and then the third was investor, someone who might be looking to flip a home, maybe it's a rental, whatever it might be to go on the market, the things they might do. And those were our six best ROI tips. Yeah, that those are good. And I like, I could totally sit here and like, go like talk about so many more things and oh, absolutely and even start thinking about oh gosh what do I want to do like the things that I could do to my house like yeah that's a whole nother that's a whole nother thing what do you yeah. think I mean uh, before we wrap here we're uh we've got maybe just a couple minutes left here mm-hmm. and we'll have a couple of things to run over <laughs> Scott goes goal um uh, what do you think is that what that means I didn't, yeah. I never knew what that one oh. meant. <laughs> it could be like this too. Is yeah. it? Oh, it's not like hand- okay. I you know what I didn't know what that emoji meant. So At least that's like what I, I think football it. Football game or something where you. Okay, I've seen that before, but okay, thank you. I just learned something. <laughs> and that's what we're here to do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Uh, if you had one project. <laughs> Is it a high five? That'd be like a high 10, wouldn't it? No. Is it high five? Is that a high 10? (laughs) Okay. Someone needs to look that up. It's a goal. I'm pretty sure. (laughs) Uh, And Don always thinks that's funny. Each of us is thinking something else. Raise the roof. It's a paper football goal. Like if you ever play, (laughs) you make a football, that's the goal you make. So they shoot it through it. Oh. Uh, yep, and, and you know what? That's also that's used for prayer a lot. But Queen, I think that's that what is I the high one. five. <laughs> we got a whole new emoji. Like, what does it mean? We have to do I've been that. Using yeah. the wrong. <laughs> oh, well, God. you know what? It, it, we're not uh, we're not emoji linguists, so <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Oh gosh, I got tears. Uh, yeah. So what? Uh, what do you think is? What would be one project? What is one project you do want to actually do for your home? <laughs> We're not worthy. <laughs> um, so distracting the thing. <laughs> I'll go first. I think yeah. I, I would like to do a, a kitchen and bath for sure for me. So we have a walk-in shower and we have a tub. I never use the tub. Um, so... We were thinking, and the tub is kind of like this built in with the tile stuff. And so I was thinking, you know, if we were going to have a tub there, maybe it would have less space if we did a clawfoot tub. And then um, I'd like to redo our shower because it has like a seat in it that takes up the hole. And I'd like to take the seat out and open the shower up so it just has more space in it. So that's a bath. I'd like to do a bathroom remodel. And then um, I like to just do a kitchen refresh. So our kitchen is still... 2009 so and that doesn't seem so old but then when you put do the math it's like oh gosh yeah it's a 2009 yeah. kitchen so getting there jason kitchen, what and bath. Do? kitchen and bath our house is fairly new so we have a bath too like a jetted tub but i've never used it um our bathroom is as big as our bedroom so um it's fairly large but I think we're happy actually for now, but it's going to be like 2009 for you and 10 years for us. So, yeah. <laughs> and so you'll wait in 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's on hold right now. because Yeah. Happy. Yeah. And Don and I uh, is relatively new, but I think there are three things we would uh, consider for, uh, and this is really for our own enjoyment. Uh, one is, uh, is a heater for the pool. Kind of looking to see what, uh, what that is. Uh, two would our neighbors have been doing this and it's like, Oh, fantastic. Uh, extending the driveway, making it wider so we can actually uh, have more utilization of that. But the third is remember when I talked about the front patio area, uh, front porch area, and that being, uh, Donna's spot, uh, we've talked about this, that 
getting a she shed in the backyard would be great. Somewhere that is her own space because she gets crowded out with testosterone all day and having a place that she can uh, kind of call her own. So that's the one other area we've talked about is uh, maybe a she shed down the road. A she shed. <laughs> Bye, Tom. Yeah. yeah. Paint. Yeah. And during, and you're, as you're talking about a pool heaters, I'm like hating on you because, yeah. <laughs> Christy, pool heaters yeah. are nice. <laughs> and yeah. Scott is a yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, our level of pool heaters is just a warm bath, right? So. <laughs> It might be boiling water when the power goes out. <laughs> right. A sauna. I like that, Ooh, Heather. I really like the idea of a sauna. Mm-hmm. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sweat. Sweat to so the oldies. Hot. You just all took right. the whole glory out of it, Jurgen. <laughs> it's all good. All, all right. right. So well, we actually have we... a couple of things to cover before we end, which are uh, things that are coming up during the week here. Um, the first one would be uh, Christy, what's the first one? Or Jared? Oh, winter trip. Davian, what's winter trip? Yeah, winter trip. So three times a year. Actually, I need to, it's in the, so it's, our drawing will be coming up. Well, on our next um, one, we'll let you know exactly when the drawing is going to be, but you have time to um, register to win a trip. And this is anywhere in the world. Um, click on the link. You will be able to fill out a form. No purchase necessary. It literally is a $4,000 credit to, um, with our travel partner to go anywhere. So um, basically, it's it's wide open to um, for you to choose on where to go. So yeah, definitely click on that win a trip and um, enter for your chance to win. And we will announce the winner. Um, and they're they're very they're random winners. I mean, this is something that we're doing company wide. So um, we'll announce the winner um, when the time comes as well. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. Uh, open houses. You know, we didn't talk about this prior. Uh, open houses. Uh, we have open houses coming up this weekend. And uh, we have them down below. No? Oh, check That's out the link down below. Okay. Have. Fantastic. Thank you. I was trying to do, uh, it wasn't semaphore because that would be with flags, but sign language. And I wasn't reading my sign language very well. She had this up and it was like, goal? <laughs> High five? High five. <laughs> Raise the roof. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And career night is coming up. If you're interested in uh, what real estate brokers uh, do, agents do, and what uh, a life like this is about, what it takes to get engaged or involved in it. We actually go over this in a little class we call career night. It's on uh, February 22nd, this coming Tuesdays from uh, 530 to 630. And you'll see a link below where you can register. It's great. All you have to do is be curious. Yep. And then we'll help you out. Yep. That's right. So step in. And Christy is hosting a class. Instagram 101. What date is that? February 22nd. So, and again, if you go onto our events tab, you can see all the things that are going on, all the classes, education, information, events that we are hosting and participating in. So um, we'd love to see you um, join us for any of these. Absolutely. Okay. So we have got to the end. And Jason, being the guest, we'll ask if you want to count us out. This is what we, where we end each one. It's be bold is what we say. It's a declaration to go out and do something that helps you get outside of your comfort zone because where all of the glory, all of the things that are great in life are out just a little outside of where we're currently comfortable. So we always want to grow that. Okay. So you want yeah. to yeah, do I go from five? You can go from whatever number you want as long as it's under a hundred. Okay, well, let's go. Okay, five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Be bold. Be bold. <laughs> <laughs> Raise the roof. <laughs> All right. Have, have a, a great, great day. Bye, Bye, guys. <laughs>